You're watching another great catfishing video from Learn to Catch Catfish with your host, professional guide, Chad Ferguson. Catfishing TV covers tips, tricks, and information to help you learn how to catch more and bigger catfish on your next fishing trip. The ultimate resource available for expert catfishing information. After watching, make sure you visit learntocatchcatfish.com. Now, here's your host, Chad Ferguson. Hey, this is Chad Ferguson, learntocatchcatfish.com. I'm going to go into a little bit today about the Santee rig or Santee Cooper rig for catfish. Hopefully, you've seen some of our other videos and articles on different catfish rigs. I've had a ton of questions about those articles and, and little bits and pieces people are wanting to know that they didn't get in the first article. So I'm going to go more in this article, not so much into how to tie them, but I will hit the basics on that, but more into the applications and what these do and when you should use these catfish rigs. Um, the Santee Cooper rig or Santee rig as some people will call it is um, really just a variation of the slip sinker rig. You have your main line running from your fishing rod. Messed that up there. So you have your main line running to your fishing rod. And to that main line, you add a sliding sinker. That can either be a no roll sinker or an egg sinker, either one will work. And then you have a brass barrel swivel tied onto your main line. Once you've done that, you have a leader that runs off from your swivel and then a hook attached to the end of that leader. So this is basically, or, or is a slip sinker rig here. Now the difference between a slip sinker rig and a Santee rig is that on a Santee rig you add what's known as a peg float to that leader line. That peg float slides onto the leader and helps to suspend this bait off the bottom of the lake. So really the way that this looks is you have your sinker here and because you've added that float here to your leader that float helps to suspend that bait up off the bottom of the lake or the river where you're fishing. So this cork suspends that bait up off the bottom of the lake or river and, and helps lift that bait up off the bottom. Now what that does um, is a number of things. If you're fishing with a standard slip sinker rig, then your leader is going to be down here on the bottom, which means your bait is going to be either on the bottom or very close to the bottom. So. If you look at a picture of a catfish, you will see that catfish have eyes that are up on the top of their head. So if these fish are laying down here on the bottom of the lake, and your bait's laying down here on the bottom of the lake, it is down below them. So the difference is you're using the bottom as a point of reference. to bring your bait up off the bottom to catch these fish. The other thing that this does is it helps kind of stabilize that bait in the water column. Um, you know, catfish move all through the water column. People think that they're bottom feeders. They will feed on top. They'll feed in the middle of the water column. They'll feed on the bottom. Um, so using a rig like this, where this peg float suspends this bait up off the bottom of the lake helps get that rig into the line of sight of where the catfish are. Now, 
one of the biggest questions I've had, uh, or a number of the questions I've had, what size sinker should I use? You need to use the size sinker that you feel comfortable with. Um, I generally will use an ounce and a half to two ounce sinker. Um, if there's high wind, there's a lot of waves, you're gonna need more weight to keep it down on the bottom. Um, the lighter the weight, generally, the less you're gonna get hung up. I like big weights. I don't know what else to tell you. Ounce and a half to two ounce egg sinker or no roll sinker. Um, I've had a lot of questions about this peg float and how far it needs to be from the hook and I've covered this in the article. You generally want this to be about two inches to three inches from the hook. I like to use a 1.5 to 2 inch peg float for this type of rig. Um, you can use something smaller than that. I generally will stick with the inch and a half peg floats. They seem to work best. Now, I mentioned in a different video about making these rigs up and what you need to do. Um, and something to watch out for is you always want to make sure that the peg goes on this side of this rig, okay? Because that peg, when you push it in there on the leader and plug that little hole to hold this float in place, it will uh, help keep the water from getting caught up inside that little float. And what I have found is if you put the peg on the hook side here you've got this big open hole on this float and as you're moving this rig through the water especially if you're drift fishing it causes this rig to act very erratic and it moves around all crazy in the water um, and there's a long drawn out story as to how I discovered that but that's the basic is that you want to make sure that you get your peg right here on this side of the float now, I've had a number of questions wanting to know how long should I make that leader on this rig? Um, you know, I, I think I mentioned in an article I wrote anywhere from 18 to 36 inches is pretty common. Um, how long you want to make that leader? At the end of the day, it all depends on where the catfish are in the water column. Um, I can't tell you you need to make this five feet, you need to make this six feet, you need to make this two feet. What you have to do is go through and use your graph. Your graph's going to have tick marks on the side of it with your depth, and you're going to see catfish on your graph. And if you look at your graph and you see that those fish are holding at six feet, then you need a leader that's going to give you the ability to suspend that bait up around that six foot column. Um, I would say as a general rule, I make these leaders 18 to 28 inches probably depending on the day. Um, sometimes I have a tendency to go a little bit longer you know it's not something I can cover in a short video on YouTube but experiment with this leader length and see what works best for you and you're gonna find that magic number and it's gonna change every day um, you know it's just something that you have to get a feel for and learn a little bit more but again 18 to 36 inches is probably a pretty good place to start now the other question I've had a lot is when should I use a Santee rig? Um, you can use a Santee rig for anchored fishing, absolutely. Um, you know, again, it's going to help hold that bait up off the bottom of the lake or river. Um, you know, I know a lot of people who fish a mix of a Santee rig and a slip sinker rig in combination with each other and they see what works best for you. But this rig is most commonly used for drift fishing for catfish. Um, a lot of guys really prefer this because, again, goes down, holds that bait up off the bottom of the lake. They'll stagger out different rigs with different lengths and try to cover a lot of different water. 
Um, it is a very good rig for drift fishing for catfish. Once you're done watching this video, if you'll go down below and leave us a comment and let us know what you think, or if you have any questions, throw your questions out there in the comments. Make sure that you go to learntocatchcatfish.com. You can get step-by-step -step instructions on how to tie this catfish rig and get a ton of more fishing tips and tricks to help you catch more catfish on your next catfishing trip. Until next time, again, this is Chad Ferguson, learntocatchcatfish.com.